everyone for coming. Um, so I'm just going to basically bookend this. Um, so I'm going to basically go through some thoughts about what we're facing and how we're going to go about it, and then we're going to basically bookend it at the end with a discussion about how we're going to get there, um, so to speak. Um, so um, this probably dates me. Um, you call them kind of stranglers. Some people might recognise the bond, but things are changing. You know, we know we, we know this change. We know that if we don't do something about this change, uh, then people are going to face the consequences on the right and some other things that are possibly worse. Um, um, so last year, before Christmas, uh, I actually uh, actually went to the Environment Business Summit. Uh, so basically, uh, environmental disciplines, so the people at uh, Action Tree Alliance, the Alice, um, WSP, RSK, etc., etc., all the big people were there. Um, there were lots of people in the environment uh, business. Uh, I think I was the only archaeologist. I didn't see any, any anybody else there from the archaeological heritage to be described anywhere. Um, but there were some interesting insights that came from that. Um, and that is that basically, we are facing huge change, we are facing huge challenges. Um, but out of those challenges, of course, going to come opportunities. Basically, we're looking for the next uh, industrial revolution. You may ask why I've got a picture of the Royal Navy there. Uh, it's because, in my view, the Royal Navy is, in fact, the driver of our own industrial revolution. God said we started off fighting the Civil War over the young of pay for this. Um, throughout the 18th century, um, there were changes in finance, governance, the way we sourced labour, the way technology was used, the way technology was used in dockyards, etc. etc. a huge take up of, of, of technologies. Throughout the 18th century, in order to basically make this uh, empire building navy, from which great benefit came to Britain, maybe not to other parts of the world, but all the places in the world. Um, there were big questions about resourcing and skills throughout the environmental discipline in the world. Um, we are aware that um, there is a lot we need to do in the next decade, and we do not have the people in post war at the moment, nor do we have the people being trained. Discussion there. Um, as I say, there are huge, there are huge challenges. There are huge opportunities that are going to come from this. Um, and one of those is going to come out of the sorts of clients that we're going to be working for. Um, some of you may be aware of the uh, wheel on the right there, the left. Yes, the left to your left. <laughs> My right. Um, which is basically the stages of change where, where, where people are, where their comfort zones are. I, I would say that. Thinking about comfort zones, um, I would say I'm a very nervous individual. This is well outside my comfort zone given the talk like this. The sort of thing that we're going to be basically driving each other to come out of comfort zones as we move forward over the next decade. Um, so I would say our government. In the danger zone going, oh my god, we're not, we're going to get voted out because people don't want to accept these policies. Blah, blah, so we're going to ditch them for a while until after. I think maybe amongst us in here, we're sort of drifting. Um, but we need to face the change. Now on the right is the next one. This year gets fear from 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 people like Frank Herbert. Uh, basically, we've got to basically look in at ourselves, think about where we want to go, see where we want to go, come out the other side. Basically, we are businesses, so we have to cut our cloth. Um, we have to cut our cloth while also balancing other priorities. Um, when I sort of say cut our cloth, when we think about that cloth is based in, 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 in a matter of time, um, how much time we've got available for things, and how much that's going to cost in, in terms of actually money with the plant and like that. All these things are basically something we have to worry about when we come to delivering what we want to in the new environment. So, this is one of my favourite tools. Uh, I think the cat is actually photoshopped into this, um, but that cat flap does actually exist in that door next to the people. Um, basically, as an environmental discipline, um, Atkins Realis, and all the other sort of environmental disciplines out there, we are usually very early doors into the big projects, albeit usually they're very big projects, so the big industry projects, etc., 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 except that we don't do a lot of small stuff. Um, but the sort of stuff we are doing within that larger sort of mega structure can 
be sort of fed down after it's been tried and applied uh, within the environment we're working with. Um, so, again, probably one of, our, one of the things we need to be doing is we need to be trying to knock down silos. Um, so, sort of getting out of like individual thinking and getting together, like joining people up. Um, so, we're all pulling together. Just like we'll get to the end of the race and we'll all sort of try like this, like this. Um, hopefully, not catch too many crowds. Finally, um, basically, I think environmental concerns like active drivers and our companion, the command company, are place to provide bandwidth in which we can experiment with the sort of things that people are talking about um, during, during this conference. Um, so, on our future delivery of grid reassurance, reassuring the stakeholders, reassuring ourselves that we are doing the right thing, that it actually works, and that we have a very shit thing and it's still shit after we've tried it out, um, and the full scales. Yes, it was going to talk about the most important thing which I think will come down to all the work we're doing, and that is getting it out 